Hello, greetings Hastings Mystery Theater viewers. This is Dan LeClaire. I'm the program manager for Hastings Cable Access Channel and the behind the scenes guy for Hastings Mystery Theater. You may have heard Randall mention my name a time or two. First of all, I'd like to just thank everyone for all your likes and your subscribes and all the, the great comments you've been giving us over the years. Uh, and if you want to do a little more for us, because that in itself helps us so much, but if you want to do a little more, check the description uh, below this video and you'll see links to uh, our merchandise shop where you can buy merchandise related to Hastings Mystery Theater, a mystery theme, uh, as well as a link to donate if you want to do more than that. And you'll, you can see products on there like this and uh, check it out, see if you like that. Okay, with no further ado, here's your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1934 for a Columbia movie, The Crime of Helen Stanley. This was the third of four Inspector Trent movies. We showed the first one last week, but I can't find the copy for movie number two or four. But this isn't really unusual because half of all the movies made in the 1930s no longer exist. The film use deteriorates over time, so unless somebody copied the movie onto a different media, they're simply lost. Tonight, an actress is shot while filming. Why she was murdered is as much of a mystery as who did it. Inspector Trent is played by Ralph Bellamy. He's very good as a serious detective. A few years later, he would be equally good as a light-hearted role playing Ellery Queen. Bellamy began making movies in 1931, and he worked steadily and ended his career in television. Playing Helen Stanley tonight is... She was born in Alabama in 1911, and she left University of Alabama Law School to go to Hollywood, where she found work in supporting roles. Tonight she plays the female lead, but usually she was in supporting roles. Her best remembered role was as Sam Spade's girlfriend Friday in the classic Maltese Falcon. Patrick's husband was an agent who once represented Earl Stanley Gardner, who was the author of the Perry Mason books. Well, through this connection, she became the executive producer of the Perry Mason TV show. Let's return to 1934 and enjoy The Crime of Helen Stanley. Carl, I want to go back to the studio on an hour. Where are you going? It doesn't make any difference to you. Ordinarily, it wouldn't. But when Lee Davis is with you, it does. I don't think that's any of your business. Well, don't you? Well, I do. I know you. Wait, Helen, you don't understand. Me and I are going to be married. Married? Oh, don't make me laugh. What's so funny about that? You've known for a long time that Betty and I love each other. I think you used to whisper that in my ear at one time. Oh, please. We've been over this so many times. You little fool. Can't you see through him? Don't you know that he'll tire of you as quickly as he did of me? Wait a minute. It's time somebody told Betty the truth about us. And you're going to tell her? Yes, I am. Don't leave. I know all about it. Let him alone. 
least I'll be interested in hearing how he'll explain some of the things that have happened. You were a big stoner. I was trying to get started as a cameraman. It meant a future for me in pictures. I've heard enough. Now you listen to me. I've served your purpose, gave you your start, and now you're an ace cameraman. But you seem to forget that I'm Helen Stanley. I made you and I'll break you just as easily. You only think you can. You're through. Washed up. Out of the business. You won't get away with it. Oh, won't I? Tomorrow there'll be a new cameraman on my set and someone else will photograph me. You wouldn't dare do that. I dare anything in Hollywood. People do as I say. Now get out. Yes, this is Inspector Trent. Oh, well, good morning, Miss Stanley. I'm sorry to have to bother you, Inspector, but I just couldn't stand it any longer. Well, surely you must be joking. No, I'm serious, I tell you. But I can't discuss it over the phone. Can't you come over to the studio right away? Yes, thanks. Take three. Yeah. 
Be ready in a minute, Mr. Gibson. Miss Stanley's on her way down now. Look at those people that bunch in the corner like sardines. Say, break it up over there. A couple of you come down stage. That's better. If I have to photograph another one of Gibson's pictures, I'm going to quit. You said a mouthful. There's only one other person around here I like less, and that's that Stanley. Shh. Pipe down, Jack. You'll be out on your ear. Uh, playing the part of the racket here. An actor named Wallace. He's right over there. Tell him to take his top coat off. Don't. Would you mind taking off the coat, Mr. Wallach? Oh, yes, yes. You know what you're going to do, don't you? Yes, I know. I get up and shoot at it twice. Then I make an exit. That's right. Well, look all right, Larry? Yes, Bob, looks fine, it's fine. Does this person look like a chief of police? Well, it's an exact copy of the uniform. But I don't want a uniform. I want evening clothes. Well, the script calls for a uniform. I don't care what the script calls for. I'm directing this picture. Evening clothes. Make them change. All right, Bob, get over the wardrobe. All right, Larry. You see, the script a minute, would you, Benny? Sure. I knew it called for a uniform. Certainly, you did. Don't let him get you down, Larry. The mug. Would you like to take a look at it through the camera, Mr. Gibson? Certainly I do. Did they give you a revolver, Mr. Wallach? Not yet. Hey, Pop! Yeah. Where's the gun for Mr. Wallach? Right here. Okay. Two blanks. Okay. Now remember, when I cue you. Yeah. All right. Elder. Remember, you're not to leave my side today, Carl. What are you doing on this set? Just a minute, Miss Stanley. I told him in the front office I wanted a new cameraman today. I know. And then get him off the set. We will. We have a new man on the way over, but it will take him an hour to get here, and we can't hold up the whole company. All right, then. But as soon as the scene's taken, he's finished. You leave that to me. And now, shall we begin? You finish right here in the foreground. It's marked with chalk. What about a rehearsal? It isn't necessary. I'm ready. Very well, then. Would you mind stepping into the sidelines, and I will cue you in? Come on, what are we waiting for? Come on, folks, on your clothes. Come on, move it. Hurry up. Already here, Mr. Gibson. Watch me for your cue, Alex. Nice. <whistles> Turn him over. Running. Speed. Music. <laughs> Quick, don't let anyone out. Okay. Out of the way here. Here's the doctor. 
Nobody's allowed in here. Inspector Trent from headquarters. Oh. The family just been shot. Shot? Yes, sir. How did you get in? How is she, Doctor? Well, it pierced her heart. Have you probed for it yet? Well, I can't do that without a nod from the police. You have one. Probe for the bullet. Now, tell me what happened. Well, we were playing a scene to call for a man to shoot at Miss Stanley. Where is he? Oh. Wallach! Mr. Wallach! Oh, Jimmy. Have you seen Wallach? Not since the shooting, Larry. Hey, do you think he did? He must be on the stage. I ordered the door locked as soon as I found out she was dead. See if you can find him. In the meantime, I'd like to talk to Miss Stanley's maid. Very well. Yes, sir. I'll see if I can find Wallach for you. What's your name? Jesse Allen. Were you with Miss Stanley when she telephoned me this morning? Telephoned you this morning? Yes. She must have done that while I was down at the wardrobe department. Were you with her when she came on the set? Yes, sir. Did she seem to be nervous or worried? She's been that way for days. Any idea why? No, sir. That is, uh, no. Well, it's Inspector. A 32. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Doctor. Will you take charge of the body until the coroner arrives? Certainly. You haven't located Wallace yet, sir. You sure he can't get out? It's practically impossible. Find him. In the meantime, I'd like to examine any other guns that were used in the set. Yes, sir. Tommy, you had a gun, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that's it. 38 Special. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Mm, I don't think so. When did you get out? Last week. What are you doing here? I'm trying to make a living and I'm playing it honest, too. Good idea. Stick to it. This guy was trying to slip out of the door. He had this in his pocket. 45 automatic. What's your name? Carl Williams. I'm Miss Stanley's bodyguard. Body taken to the emergency hospital. The news must have reached the front office. Here's Mr. Richardson. What's happened, Larry? Wallace, he's dead. Inspector Trent, this is Mr. Richardson. He owns the studio. How do you do? 
Inspector, this woman wants to talk to you. This is all Mr. Wally. Well, suppose we've been to my office. Good idea. You better stay here. You say you've seen this man Wallach at Miss Stanley's house before? Yes, sir, three times. But Miss Stanley wouldn't see him. Is there any idea why she wouldn't see him? Yes. Well? Well, the first time he came there, he caused an awful row. I thought he was drunk after what he said, but when I told Miss Stanley, she said it was true. Go on. Wallach was her husband. They were married 12 years ago in New York. He was just a kid starting out on the stage. And he was a star. What happened? The usual thing. Nightlife, drink, gambling. And she left him? Yes. She said she gave him two or three chances to straighten out, and then she picked up and came out here to try pictures. And he never bothered her before? No, sir. She gave him an allowance, provided he stay in New York. And she stopped paying him when he followed her out here? Yes, sir. Well, you had your secretary instruct Larry to get the names and addresses of those who were on the set and tell them not to leave town till the inquest is over? Certainly, Inspector. Thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Richardson. It's an open and shut case. She wouldn't pay her husband any more hush money, and he killed her. It looks like it, I'll admit, but you can never tell. Those open and shut cases sometimes are the toughest ones to crack. Captain, did you finish your investigation? Yes. Wallach's gun never fired that bullet. The rifling marks on that piece of letter are entirely different from those made on a test bullet that was fired by Wallach's gun. But Wallach admitted he killed her. Thanks, Captain. Sorry if I've upset the apple cart, gentlemen. Let me know if I can be any further help to you. Why did Wallach kill himself? Because he thought he'd murdered his wife. I don't get you. We found a discharged shell and a fully loaded one in Wallach's gun, didn't we? That's right. Well, listen, donkey. He came there to kill his wife. He got a job on the strength of being her husband. He was given a gun with two blank shells in it. He removed one and substituted a real bullet. In his excitement, he only shot once and exploded the blank cartridge. Come on. Where are we going, Inspector? Miss Stanley's house. House is on the next street, Inspector. I know, but there's no use advertising ourselves. We're stopping right in front of it. Come on. Someone got here before us. Come on out of there. Who are you? I'm Betty Lane, strip pro, true art studio. Why were you hiding? I was afraid. Afraid of what? Oh, you wouldn't understand. Gibson, the director. Take her back in there. Don't let her leave and keep her quiet. Come on, girlie. What are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. I think your answer is more important than mine. I don't think it's any of your business. I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry if I were you. You can't stop me. I'm not mixed up in your police case. Let me go. You're overlooking one point, my friend. You're under suspicion. For what? Murder. Now suppose you tell me what you came here for. I came to look for a very rare book I lent Miss Stanley. I thought I'd better come and get it before it was too late. You expect me to believe that? Everybody knows I collect rare books, first editions. And keys to other people's houses? Let's have it.
You may be a good director, Gibson, but you're a pretty bad actor. Now tell me what you came here for. All right, I'll tell you. I'm not afraid. I might as well tell it to you now. You'll find it out sooner or later anyway. Go ahead. I first met Miss Stanley three years ago in Vienna. I wanted to come to Hollywood, and she helped me get a job. They let me into this country on a six-month passport. And you overstayed your time. I, uh... I changed my name so the immigration officers would lose track of me. And when this awful thing happened, I decided I'd better get busy. Meaning what? Miss Stanley has kept a diary for years. I know my history is in it. You'd better get down to the Federal Bureau first thing in the morning and try and square yourself. Thanks, Inspector. I appreciate it. Now, Betty, suppose you tell me just exactly what you were doing in this house. I'm looking for the same thing that brought Gibson here. Miss Stanley's diary. Yes. Seems a great many people knew about this diary and were afraid of what it contained. That's right, Inspector. It's no secret that Helen confided her innermost thoughts to the pages of that book. And there was something in it that you didn't want seen by anyone else. Yes. Don't you think you'd better tell me what it was? Well, it had no bearing on what happened at the studio. It was personal. You felt that that gave you the right to come here to force your way into someone's house? Well, there's something I think you should know, Inspector. Yes? I have every right to be here. You see, Helen Stanley was my sister. Come in. This was her dressing room, Inspector. Hello. Hello, Inspector. Sending Miss Stanley things to her house? Yes, sir. Miss Betty wants to go over them. Her correspondence and her books, you're packing them too? She didn't keep anything here but clothes, Inspector. Do you anything of a diary around here? No, sir. Nothing missing, then? Yes, sir, there is. What? We kept a revolver in that dressing table drawer. It's gone. When did you discover that? An hour ago, when I came here to pack. What kind of a gun was it? It was a 32 automatic. When did you see it last? The morning she was killed, I remember seeing it in that drawer. Did anybody visit her here in this dressing room before she went down to the set? No one but Mr. Noel. No, he was a business manager, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Any idea where he lives? He has an apartment somewhere on Wilshire Boulevard. I saw him about ten minutes ago at the garage, Inspector. He said he was leaving town. Which way was he headed? He was asking about a detour on the coast route to San Francisco. Give me police headquarters. You know his full name? George Tino. Age? Oh, about 40, I guess. Height? Oh, I don't know. He was, he was tall, Mr. Trent, was probably six feet. That's right, Inspector, and he weighed about 160. Police headquarters? To be Captain Long in the communications department. What kind of a car was he driving? Black coupe. Hello, Captain Long? Inspector Trent. Pick up George T. Noel, age 40, weight 160 pounds, height 6 feet, driving a black coupe, believed headed for San Francisco on the coast route. Get it on the radio and the teletype right away. Right. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Watch the black coupe. Believed headed for San Francisco over the coast route. Arrest the driver. George T. Noel, age 40, 6 feet, 160 pounds. doing with Miss Stanley's revolver? She gave it to me herself. It was 
too large for a woman. So I offered to trade it in on a smaller one. You handled Miss Stanley's money, too, didn't you? I was her business manager. You had an argument with her over money the morning she was killed. A business disagreement? I think you'd give me the details. Well, when Miss Stanley suddenly made up her mind to go to Europe, she demanded an accounting of all her funds in my possession. And did you give it to her? Oh, my dear inspector. After all, stocks, bonds, business matters can't be written down on a slip of paper and tossed away like that, you know. Well, Captain, the gun hasn't been fired in six months. Thanks. Well, that ought to convince you, Inspector. Don't be too fast. You've still got a lot of explaining to do. What do you mean? While we were looking for you, auditors have been at work. It's a matter of $60,000 you'll have to account for before you leave us. That is what we call a production still, Inspector. It's kept on file in case we need to duplicate the set. When was it made? Just a few minutes before they actually took the scene. Thanks, Mr. Richardson. Do you think someone in that picture is really the murderer? That's a hard guess to make. After all, it could have been anybody on the set. We don't even know from which direction the shot came. She was dancing, whirling about. Well, all we ask is that you clear it up as quickly as possible. For two days now, the papers have carried nothing but stories about that murder. It's bad publicity. I can appreciate that. Oh, uh, is it absolutely necessary to keep that cathedral set under guard? Why? Well, Lee Davis was asking for permission to go and get his camera. We've assigned him to another picture. Sorry, I'm afraid he'll have to wait. If you'll tell Larry here to show me about the lot, I'll start by questioning some of the people in this picture. Certainly. What will we begin with? Baker's as good as any. Okay, let's go. Jack Baker inside. I think he's in on stage one. Should we stroll over there? Suppose you hunt up Lee Davis. I'd like to question him next. I'll find Baker. Okay. Good morning, Lee. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Lee. Hello, oh, Tim. Hello, darling. It isn't wise our being seen together. I've got to talk to you. Come here. Did anything happen? Inspector Trent knows that Helen was my sister. What else does he know? That's all. Well, there's nothing incriminating in that. Oh, Lee, I'm not afraid of anything that's happened. It's what they'll think of that diary found. Are you sure she had my name in it? Oh, of course I'm sure. I know Helen. And if someone finds it, it will be just as though she would come back to separate us again. Now, don't let it get you, honey. Well, don't you see what they'll think? She had you taken off the picture. And now with evidence of her hatred in her own handwriting, they'd have a motive. They'd accuse you of murder. Steady, kid. They can't pin anything on me. Oh, I'm afraid. That won't help. We've got to face it. Bacon thinks she was sore because of the way I photographed her. She's got to stick to that. Might as well start pulling the lamps off of this set up here. All right. Look at that. I wonder when that fell. Hey, Jack, come on over here. I never saw one of them fall before. Come on. Somebody caught me off guard. Better take it easy, Inspector. You must have cracked your head when you fell. It's my own fault. He caught me off guard. Baker, did you see anyone besides your own crew on that stage this afternoon? Nobody but Williams. He came in just as we were bringing you down. One more question. You didn't like Helen Stanley, did you? I hated the ground she walked on. Why? Well, she got me fired from another studio one time. Wouldn't anybody get along with that dame? Do you know anything about this, Larry? Well, yes, sir. 
The day before she was killed, she complained to the front office about Jack. You carry a gun? Yep. Got a license? Thirty-two. That's right. What is this gun? It's at home. I never cared unless I'm working late at night. That's all. Seems to me that fellow admitted plenty. That's the trouble. He admitted too much. Maybe I ought to tell you, Inspector. When Miss Stanley told me to stick close to the set, I sort of got the idea it was on account of Baker. Was she ever afraid of him before? She never mentioned it. Of course, I was only with her a few months. How'd you get the job with her? Well, I drifted out here just about the time a lot of the movie stars were being marked for holdup. An agency put me in touch with her, and she hired me. She go out a great deal? Almost every night. I think she went to all those parties just so she could forget. Forget what? I don't know. There seemed to be something in her life. She'd get worried and low, and she'd sit for hours and write in the diary. Did you ever see the diary? Only the outside. It was tan leather. What are you going to do now that you've lost your job? Well, Mr. Richardson's made a place for me. Good, then I don't know where to find you in case I need you. Larry, what about Lee Davis? You find him? He wasn't at the camera department. Go on the gate and see if he's on the lot. Yes, sir. Hello. Who? Here he comes now. All right, I'll tell him. Lee, you're wanted up in Mr. Richardson's office. Who wants me? Inspector Trent. Inspector Trent? Yeah. Thanks. I advise you to tell the truth, Lee. That's all I can say. But why should I be questioned at all? There were a dozen people near me when she was killed. They'd have seen me if I did it. Not necessarily. What do you mean? The gun might have been concealed somewhere. Oh, ridiculous. I was interested in photographing Miss Stanley, not in killing her. One thing I think you should know, Inspector. The morning Miss Stanley was killed, she came to me and asked for someone else to photograph her picture. Did she give any reason for it? She seldom gave reasons. She made demands. Did you know about this? Yes. She made quite a fuss when she came on the set. Gibson finally convinced her I should finish the scene. She didn't like the way you've been photographing her. Apparently not. Did she ever complain to you about it before? Yes. That's rehearsal the day before. Said she wasn't satisfied, but no star ever is. What did Betty have to do with it? She had nothing to do with it. How did her name come into it? Who's been telling you all this bunk? Never mind that. Answer my question. Betty's name wasn't even mentioned. Trying to shield her? Why should I? That's what I'd like to find out. Ever say that before? No. That's your handwriting on the back of the card. We compared it with your signature on the payroll check. All right. I wrote it. What does that prove? Nothing. You have no right to... You're forgetting one thing. Betty Lane is under suspicion. We'll question her about this card. Maybe she'll tell us the truth. Wait a minute. Leave Betty out of this. I'll tell you why I wrote that on the card. She and I are to be married. I didn't want her in this mess. Then she knew that you and Helen Stanley weren't getting along? Yes. Davis, you're under arrest. Why do you have no evidence? On the contrary, I have a very clear case. Point number one, you wanted to marry Helen Stanley's sister. You met opposition. Point number two, she didn't like the way you've been photographing her. She threatened to have you taken off the picture, which would have meant a black eye in your profession. I didn't do it. You haven't anything to be afraid of. Come on along. I just heard about Lee. Why did you arrest him? But, I but you haven't answered my question. Why did you arrest him? He didn't kill my sister. How do you know? Because I know Lee Davis. He hated her, but he isn't a killer. You seem pretty sure. I am. You see, I know more about this than you do. Perhaps that's why I'm not so sure of his innocence. Now, if you were to tell me the whole story... That's why I came here. Lee and I didn't want this thing to be made public, but... 
I'm going to trust you. I think you can rely on my discretion. Two years ago, there was an infatuation between Lee and my sister. Then Lee and I fell in love. We wanted to be honest with Helen, so we told her about it. That was where we made our mistake. Ever since, she's tried to keep him out of the business. Betty, you just said you were going to tell me the whole truth. Why don't you? I will. Lee and I are married. I thought so. Inspector Trent, is it likely that he would marry me knowing that he was going to kill my sister the next day? Ordinarily, I'd say no. But oftentimes, a murderer acts on the impulse of the moment. That's it. That's what I'm trying to show you. This thing was never committed under an impulse of anger. You haven't found a gun. It was very well planned in advance. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to release Lee Davis. But remember one thing. I'm keeping an eye on you both. Have the papers prepared for the release of Lee Davis. Yes, sir. You're very kind. And I wish I could do something to help you solve this terrible thing. If you could locate that diary, it would help more than anything. Are you sure you've looked everywhere? Well, I'll search again. I'll come out and help you later on. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye. Are you leaving, Carl? I thought there wasn't any use staying any longer. I, I've been off at another place. Did my sister owe you any salary? Just this last week, but that's all right. Well, I'll see that you get it when the estate is settled. Thank you. I hope everything's cleared up for everybody's sake. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, Carl. Yes, Miss Betty? Before you go, I want to ask you something. Did you ever see my sister's diary? I've seen a writing in it. When? A great many times. Well, when was the last time? Sunday morning when I came in to tell her the car was ready. Which room was she in? The drawing room. You didn't see what she did with it? No, she told me to wait in the car and I went out again. Well, that's all, Carl. I hope your new job is a good one. Thank you. Take it easy. Oh. What happened? Well, I don't know. Someone came up behind me and then I... Did you see anyone around the house as you came in? No, but Carl Williams left a little while ago. Where's the telephone? I haven't picked up. In the hall, the first door to the right.
Now, Betty, let's get it straight. What happened? I had just opened the safe and was reading the diary when someone came up behind me. You remember anything you read in it? It's all very hazy to me. But I think that it was about seeing somebody's brother. Apparently, he was trying to get Helen to remember something that had happened years ago. Because the last line of entry read, if you only knew how hard I'd try to forget. William, after you talked to Betty outside the house, why did you come back? She told me I'd get my week's pay, and I remembered I hadn't given her a forwarding address. I see. So you came back and spied on her. Wait a minute, Inspector. Maybe it sounds kind of funny. But when I saw her opening the wall safe, I didn't know what to think. I... Go on. Well, after the way she questioned me, I wanted to see what she was going to do. And you saw her open the diary and read it? Yeah. But something cracked me on the head from behind, and I did a fade out until you pulled me out of the closet. I'll be down at headquarters if you need me. Hello, Ed. What are you doing here, Baker? We're going to start a search for tomorrow. I'll have to use the ones off this set. We've got orders not to disturb anything here. That's all right. If anybody complains, I'll be responsible. Well, I'll take it up with the other watchman. It's okay with him. It's okay with me. All right. All right, for Baker to take those soaps. Sure, I don't see why not. Thanks, boys. I'll be back later. Three police headquarters. Inspector Trent. Hello? This is Jack Baker out at the studio. I just found out how Helen Stanley was killed. So I went out on the cafe set. Yeah, the guys let me in. I had to get some stuff. Well, just as I was leaving, I accidentally... Hello. Baker. Hello. Get me a car and tell Martin and Janice to meet me downstairs. Quick. Something grab the two art studios, boys. Let's get going. Out of your office. Yes, sir. Hello there, Inspector. Where are you heading, Mr. Harry? Telephone booth close to stage three. Sure, right next to it. Come on. You didn't see anyone else near here while Baker was getting those silks. No, sir. Not a soul. Come on, Lee. Let's have a look around. Inspector. What do you think of this? Somebody watched Baker while he was here on the set this afternoon. Whoever it was was the murderer. You saw Baker discover something and sealed his lips while he was trying to pass the information on to me. Here on this set, somewhere, the secret of the whole case is hidden. If we only knew what to look for, if we could find that gun, we might be able to tell from which direction the shot came. If she hadn't been whirling around in that dance, we could get somewhere. But she was whirling. And her own momentum might have spun her around completely before she fell. Wait a minute, Inspector. Why not look at the film we shot that morning? Still, we couldn't see the bullet hit. I don't know much about police work, but I do know camera and film. 
Now, if we stuck off a print of Miss Stanley dancing and slowed down the action. You can do that? Sure we can. You've seen slow motion action in the news weekly. Lee, I want to see that film first thing in the morning. Right. Come in. Well, O'Hara. Where'd you get it? Right where you sit. In Carl Williams' bag. I must keep Carl close to the set today where I can watch him. If he tries to run away, I'll call the police. Maybe I shall phone Inspector Trent anyway. He'll know what to do. Yeah, but she had something on him. That's why he killed her. Bring him in. But no rough stuff. You didn't kill her. Why just steal the diary? I've told you over and over again. I wanted to sell it to the newspapers. I needed money. What salary did Helen's family pay you? Forty a week. How long did you work for? Three months. Three months at forty a week is about five hundred dollars. You have over twenty thousand in the bank. And every mm -hmm. dollar of it deposited while you were working for Miss Stanley. Where did you get her? That's my business. Twenty thousand in three months. There's only one way to make that much money. You're in a tough spot. You better come clean. Where'd you get it? Gambling. Where? Tijuana. When were you there? Week before last. Saturday and Sunday, I think. Maybe you were the Madonna Tijuana. Maybe you found all this money. Or maybe you stole something, some jewelry. That's a lie. Well, she, she tried to turn you in, didn't she? She had nothing to do with it. And she gave you another chance, didn't she, to make good by turning over the cash? And didn't she tell you to stick close to the set that day so she'd be sure you didn't run out on her? It was because she was afraid. Afraid of you? You just asked her just in time, didn't you, William? Yes, you sent her with a bullet. You thought she'd covered your tracks until you found she'd written it all in that diary. Then you came back and saw her sister take the book out of the safe. I'll explain all that. Yeah, I explained how you took it away from her. I didn't do it. Well, where'd you hide the gun? Well, I don't own a gun. You're lying. You murdered Helen Stanley. Oh, I didn't. You killed her to take your own. Oh, fuck her off. Oh, yeah. it. All right, Williams, you can stop lying. From now on, we're dealing with facts, understand? The facts written down in Helen Stanley's diary. You say you didn't kill her. All right, you'll have to prove that or stand trial for murder. How can I prove it, Inspector? By admitting the truth. That's your only chance of escaping the rope. Now, on the Sunday you say you were in Tijuana, you were actually at Malibu Beach. You drove Miss Stanley down there to a party and came back for her at 7 o'clock. On that same afternoon, stick-up men knocked over the beach party for $10,000 worth of jewels. It's all written down in the diary. Parties in the homes of Hollywood notables. And every time Miss Stanley attended, bandits were at work. You were in with that gang, Williams. You tipped them off and gave them the layout of the places you were to rob. Miss Stanley got suspicious. She watched you. She found out the truth. She's written the dead here unless you got the stuff back. You had to get that diary because you knew those facts were written in it. With somebody else. They caught me and taped me up. You taped yourself. You did a pretty good job of binding your legs together and putting the gag over your mouth. But your hands wouldn't fool anybody. Next time, don't leave the roll of tape on the scene. All right. You got me. Well, I didn't kill her. So help me, I didn't. Did you tell any of your gang that she was wise? I didn't have a chance. All right, boys, I think he's ready to give us the names of the mob and tell us where the jewelry was disposed of. Am I right, Williams? I'll talk. All right, take him out. Come on. Go down to the file room and look up a man called Antonio Thuringo. He was quite a well-known director four years ago. Has he got a record, Chief? No. Look him up under suicide. Okay. I had to go and put on this room, Mr. Richardson. You think slow motion will show the direction in which the bullet came, eh? It seems to me there should be a moment right after she was hit where we could see the reaction on her face. If you see that spot, Inspector, let me know. I can stop the film for a short time at any point you wish. All right, let's see it.
Stop it. Mike, go ahead. There's no question where the shot came from. She was facing the camera full on. Mr. Richards in that cafe set is still standing. The actors are in Hollywood. I'd like to see this scene we just watched on the screen made over again with everybody in their right places. Reconstruct the scene of the crime, eh? Just that. In the production office, please. If we clear up those murders, it'll be worth the cost. Oh, Henry? Mr. Richardson speaking. The Stanley set works tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Yes, I said the Stanley set. Get 118, Max. You want the set left the same as before, Inspector? I'd like to have every detail just as it was before. I'll do my very best for you. I believe everyone is grouped just as they were before, Inspector. There's one slight change I'd like to make. Certainly. Betty, would you mind standing up? Now, will you sit down, please? Good morning, Inspector. Good morning, Mr. Richardson. If you don't mind, I'd like to see what's going to happen. Not at all. I hope you're not disappointed. Would you like to speak to the actor that's playing Wallace Park? Yes, I would. Right over here, please. Well, Elmer, let me have the revolver, please. Now, remember, when I kill you, you stand up and shoot twice. Yeah. Just snap the empty gun twice. That'll do. Yes. Sir. Come on, Larry. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay. We're ready to shoot the scene any time you say. Now, is everyone just as they were before? Except that we haven't anyone to play Miss Stanley's part. Yeah. Look, Larry, you've been invaluable to me up to this time. We'll be asking too much. You mean you want me to take Helen's place? Would you mind? Not at all. Right. Turn him over. Running. Me. Action. Gave yourself away, Larry. You're under arrest for the murder of Helen Stanley. You're talking nonsense. Why should I have killed her? Because she walked out on Antonio Sarengo four years ago, left him flat in the middle of the picture he was directing, wrecked his career, caused him to commit suicide. What does that got to do with me? He was your brother. It isn't true. You claimed the body. You gave your real name to the authorities. You swore you'd make Helen Stanley pay for it. That's why you killed her. You can't prove I did it. You proved that yourself, Larry, with your guilty knowledge of the gun hidden in that camera. <laughs> a certain number of camera revolutions. How did you know the gun was in the camera? As a matter of fact, I didn't. I counted on the murderer to give that away. Well, what made you suspect Larry? A process of elimination. The diary supplied the motive. Helen Stanley was the cause of a man's committing suicide. And the police records showed that man to be Larry's brother. Was Larry the one who tried to drop that lamp on you? Sure he was. That was a clever move to try and throw suspicion on Lee, who was going to that stage earlier to inspect a set. Larry also killed Baker. Well, I guess that marks the end of the studio murder mystery. And the beginning of our delayed honeymoon. Your job will be waiting for you when you come back. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Goodbye, Inspector, and thanks for helping Goodbye, us. Goodbye, and good luck. Thanks. Thank you, Inspector. Goodbye.
Hello, greetings, Hastings Mystery Theater viewers. This is Dan LeClaire. I'm the program manager for Hastings Cable Access Channel and the behind the scenes guy for Hastings Mystery Theater. You may have heard Randall mention my name a time or two. First of all, I'd like to just thank everyone for all your likes and your subscribes and all the, the great comments you've been giving us over the years. Uh, and if you want to do a little more for us, because that in itself helps us so much, but if you want to do a little more, check the description uh, below this video and you'll see links to uh, our merchandise shop where you can buy merchandise related to Hastings Mystery Theater, a mystery theme, uh, as well as a link to donate if you want to do more than that. And you'll, you can see products on there like this and uh, check it out, see if you like that. Okay. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Bloor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Thanks Canada. again, One to you our viewers, for your kind support that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Great, sir. One of us is Mr. O. of humanity's most dangerous secret, the forbidden barrier that science must never cross. But in an amazing climax to a revolutionary medical discovery, its terrible power is delivered into the ruthless hands of a man the world once destroyed. A revenge-haunted genius, taking his name from the unknown inferno from which he returns. Dr. X, the mark of a madman who lives to kill, and who must kill to live. Dr. Xavier? Yes, I am Dr. Xavier. You can't be. I'll be very careful. I've always been careful, even though I had to kill. You're the blood killer. About me. I didn't have to. They found out for themselves. You're lying. Shh. Does he know everything? No, only that I brought you back to life. I should really kill you, Flake, for what you've done to me. Only give me a little longer. One week. That's all. There's a killer loose in the city, and you can help us find him. I told you I don't know anything. What about that full of cane? What about cane? My work ended not in failure, but in disaster. Disaster for me, disaster for Mr. X. The necessity for additional transfusions of human blood became increasingly frequent. Gentlemen, I am responsible for the... 